Hey everyone, this is Mark Blundell and today's video, I want to talk to you about that sales call that you actually have with your mortgage customer. You know, uh, a lot of my mentoring and a lot of my coaching is around the way in which the loan officer or the mortgage professional interact with the customer and you've got to be aware that there's a lot of psychology going on certainly in the mortgage customer's mind when you're talking to them for the first time when you're talking to them the first for the first time they're thinking you know do i trust this person do i like this person does this person know what they're talking about does this person is this person actually going to be able to help me achieve my goal or a better question is that goes on in the mortgage customer's mind is does this person actually understand my goal or are they just in it for them? So in this video, what I wanna take you through is a practical process of how to structure your sales call so that you can be confident that you are achieving your best objectives, which are to communicate back to the mortgage customer that you indeed are the person of choice who can add value to their life with respect to what it is that they're trying to achieve. So I want to try and break down this uh, call into a series of steps for you so that to help you to um, maybe look at what you're doing right now and to determine if there's areas of improvement because the last thing you wanna do when you've gone to all the trouble of generating this lead, whether you've bought the lead, generated the lead yourself on social media, got a lead from a realtor or another referrer, the last thing you wanna do is to not do your best to make sure that you take this person out of the market and get them invested into your sales process. So the first part that I'm going to talk about is the opening part. And of course, this is the part that's all about the small chat. Now, the small chat only needs to go for a very short period of time where you might be saying, hey, Fred, where are you calling from today? Or are you at work at the moment? Or are you at home? Or, or how are you going? Or what are you up to right now? One or two very short questions just to get the conversation started is really, really important. Now, the second part of the phone call or the Zoom meeting or Skype meeting or even your face-to-face -face meeting that you have with your mortgage customer has to be to state the agenda and take the lead. So I'm gonna write that down. So that's point number one. Point number two is to state the agenda. Now, by that, I mean and take the lead. Now, by that, what I mean is you can't just have a conversation with a mortgage customer that just is free-flowing. Ultimately, you want to think about this phone call or this Zoom call and think about, well, where do I want to take it? Where's the end point that I want to arrive at with this uh, conversation I'm going to have with my mortgage customer? Now, a lot of the time, people think that well, that's too hard to predetermine because I don't know what they want or I don't know, uh, you know, if I'm even able to get a loan for them. That's not the point. What must happen here is you must have a structure that leads your customer to the point, if in fact they do qualify for what it is that you're offering to them, it's got to lead to the point where they say, so this is the end spot that you're aiming for. Okay, what's my next steps? So before you start, you've got to be able to visualize what the end result is. And the end goal for you as the loan officer or mortgage professional is to take that customer's conversation to a point where they go, okay, what's my next steps? So it's important that you state the agenda of the call at the very beginning of the call and let the customer know what they can expect through the course of this call. And the way in which that you do that, or the best way to do that is to do something like this. Okay, um, Mary, look, the way in which I conduct these calls is like this. I don't profess that I can help everybody, and indeed I know I can't. So what I like to do 
is, if it's okay with you, is to ask you a series of questions about what it is that you're trying to achieve, what your situation looks like right now, and what your situation looks like once you've accomplished your goals. So I want to ask you a series of questions in relation to that. Now, if there's something in that, in your answers, that I think I can help you with, then I will let you know what I could do to help. And then at the end of this call, what I'd like you to do is let me know whether that's something you'd like to proceed with or not. Is that okay with you? So that is a simple way of setting the agenda and taking the lead in your call rather than that the customer take the lead in your call. Remember, you are the professional. You're the person that they're coming to for advice and direction and no one likes to follow somebody who doesn't know where they're going so one of the most important parts of the phone call is to be able to ascertain that you indeed are the uh, in the in the customer's mind that you indeed are the professional you know how to handle this call you do this every day of the week and you want to start giving them confidence that you know where you're going with your conversation so the next part about of the phone call is this part here is to figure out where they are at. Figure out where they are at. So that's point number three. And by that, I mean you've got to ask a few questions about their circumstances. You know, uh, so I normally start a conversation by saying, okay, Fantastic. Once they've said yes, they're happy with the way in which you're going to take the lead in this conversation. The next part you want to say to them is, in one sentence, can you summarize what the problem is that you think I can help you with? So that's the next step of your conversation. So in one sentence, can you summarize what it is that you think I can help you with? Now, they're going to give you some sort of an answer. So if it's debt consolidation, they're gonna go, uh, I wanna find out if I can reduce the interest I'm paying on my credit cards. Or if they're buying a new home, they're gonna say something like, uh, we're contemplating buying a new home or we've been to some open inspections and seen a home we like and we want to see if we can qualify for the loan. Okay, so normally that would be a question that you're going to ask your customer anyway. But here is where most uh, conversations fall apart between the mortgage professional and the mortgage customer. Most mortgage professionals take the answer to that question and then move on in the conversation. What I'm going to suggest you do, and this will make a huge impact to the success or otherwise of the conversations you have with your mortgage customer, what I'm gonna ask you to do is to ask another question. So let's just say they say, um, uh, yeah, we're looking at a purchasing another home. You might go, okay. So instead of going, well, what's the value of the home? What I want you to ask is a question like, okay, so how long have you been looking for a new home for? And they're gonna tell you. Then ask another question. So can I just ask what's going on in you, your life or the family's life that's prompted you to wanna look for a new home? And then you're gonna ask a question like, so can you tell me what's wrong with the existing position you're in. So in other words, the conversation might flow like, so can you tell me a little bit more about the house you're looking for? Well, we're uh, looking to buy a bigger home. Why do you want a bigger home? Well, our family's growing. The place that we're in at the moment is quite small. We all feel quite cramped. Okay, where are you living at the moment? Oh, we've j what have you got at the moment? Oh, we've just got a small three bedroom home. And what are you looking to try to attain? Well, we're looking for a four bedroom home. We want an extra bedroom, um, you know, for the family and for the kids. Can I ask why is that extra bedroom important to you? And then they're going to tell you the real reason for the call they're making for you. The point I'm trying to emphasize is you want to get down at least three layers in relation to the first answer to the question that you ask them about their present position. So ask, keep asking why, and why is that, and why is that? So the third point is to figure out where your customer is right now, and then to ask three times the question of why. 
So why is it important to get into a bigger home? Or why is it that the place you're living in right now isn't satisfactory? The, the reason for doing this is that you have to psychologically connect with the customer. In other words, you've got to make sure that this customer gets a feeling inside that you indeed have a vested interest in them not a vested interest in you getting a loan to closing. You want to e emphasize and communicate in some way, shape or fashion to that person you're speaking to, who remember is still a stranger, who remember is still thinking to themselves, is this person the right person for me? Can they help, the, can they help me? You have to get deeper uh, into their uh, answers to be able to find out the true motivation for them making that call to you. Now, the next uh, part is to understand their current situation. So understanding their current situation. And it's in this part of the uh, call that you're finding out what their uh, or the reality of what their vision is in their mind for whatever it is that they want to achieve. Now this is going to work for you whether you're talking to first time home buyers or debt consolidation, refi, whatever it is. Understand what is their current position. You know, what is the problem that they're facing in relation to their current housing situation or their current mortgage situation that has motivated them to take this action. And this is one of the most important things to find out. Understand where your current, or where the customer's current situation is at. And you get there by saying, you know, um, so what would be the number one problem that you're trying to solve in relation to purchasing a new home? Or what is the number one problem with the current mortgage that you have? Or what is the number one problem in relation to, um, you know, wanting to consolidate debt? Because what you've got to understand is that the process of selling a mortgage isn't about giving someone a new mortgage, it's about solving the problems of people. What you must understand is the mortgage simply is, that the mortgage simply is the solution to somebody's problem. Okay, now if you don't know what the problem is, you can't address the problem and you can't present your solution in context with what their problem is. So it's important to find out, you know, a, a little bit more about their current situation. How long have you been looking for a, a home? Um, how long has this been on your mind? How long have you been in the current place? How long have you been frustrated about this situation? So this is uh, the uh, very, very important part of the phone call. Now, the next part of the phone call is to identify the cause of the pain. Now, here's an important realization. Any mortgage customer that you deal with, regardless of what their end outcome is or what their goal is, is trying to accomplish something and is motivated by one of two reasons. The first is the reason of wanting to avoid pain. Okay, so that is probably one of the primary reasons why somebody seeks someone like you out to take out a new mortgage. So to avoid pain or to gain a desire. That's the second motivation. Primarily, most of them you will find or most of the the, the main driver behind people speaking to you in any instance is to avoid the pain of their current situation. Now, if you don't know what the cause of their pain is, you're not going to be able to contextualize the solution to the problem that you're going to present them. So it's important that you identify the cause of the pain. You know, uh, tell me about your current situation. Tell me about what life looks like as it is right now. So questions around that. Tell me a little bit about the home you're in right now. Tell me a little bit about the shortcomings of that home. Tell me a little bit about what it feels like to be a renter right now and what's frustrating you. Those sorts of questions give you the data and allow you to gather the data of what, how it is that you're gonna package your solution. Because remember, the mortgage is simply a solution to somebody's problem. So that's the next part, to identify 
uh, their pain. Now, the next part is to dig a little bit deeper into the causation of the pain. You know, um, and, and, and talking to them about and starting to get a bit of a grasp about where it is that they want to go. So, point number six, we're just running out of space here, but we will make this work. So, point number six is to gather more data. Now you can see that by running a telephone call or a Zoom call in this way, even before we've started to talk about loans, mortgages, rates, products, features, and all of those sorts of stuff, all sorts of things, we're investing in understanding the customer. And can I tell you that when your customer feels like you have a vested interest in what it is that they're trying to achieve and what it is that is their problem that they're trying to solve, you intuitively and intrinsically will be communicating to the customer one of the first things that you want to, that yes indeed you are the person that they should be engaging to help solve their problem. So ask them, uh, more about uh, their situation. So you might say, so tell me more about how having a four bedroom home would change your life. Or tell me more about how going from being a renter to a homeowner would change your life. Asking questions like that, gathering more data about their situation will help you when it comes time to offering your solution. The next part about this is to identify or to re-establish or to re-communicate back to the customer what it is that you're, you have understood uh, about their situation and to find out what's stopping them doing it on their own. So seven is asking the question of what's stopping you. And so you're going to re-establish or reconfirm back into the customer's mind. Okay, so you've been in this three bedroom home for five years now. I understand you want to have some more children, so you want to grow your family. Um, what's stopping you from getting that home right now? Okay, so I know that sounds like a simple question. Or what's stopping you from consolidating your debt right now? Or what's stopping you from buying that first investment property right now? Now, what you're listening for are three magical statements. And you've got to look for those three statements back from that mortgage customer before you move forward. And the three statements you're looking for are number one, uh, they will express to you that they have an inability to do it on their own. Number two, they will express to you that whatever it is that they want to achieve, they want to achieve it faster. And number three, they will tell you that they want to follow somebody or they want to acquire the help of somebody who has a proven track record in being able to take people like them from their present position to their desired position. So that's the next step of your call. Now, the next part of your call is to gain a commitment. Okay, so number eight is gain a commitment. Now, in this call part of the call, once again, you're re-establishing um, uh, their circumstance, what their pain points are, what their problem is. And then asking a question of, so can you tell me right at the moment, how is renting affecting your life? Or how is being in that three bedroom home affecting your life? Or how is having all of this high interest debt affecting your life? So this is really important to ask this question. Again, we're burying ourselves deeper and deeper into the psyche of what your customer is thinking. Because if you don't know what they're thinking, you can't give them the answer that they want to find out with respect to their problem. Okay, so um, ask them, you know, uh, is this affecting other areas of your life? 
yes, you know, it's really cramped in our home, or yes, it really bothers us that, uh, you know, the landlord wants to conduct an inspection, or it really annoys us that we can't paint the walls of our home the color that we want. Okay, so then the next question you need to ask is, so can I ask you, when are you wanting to fix this problem? So that's the next question you need to ask. So can I ask, when are you wanting to fix this problem? Now they will give you their own timeline and nine times out of 10, when you ask that question, they will say right now. Okay, so that's what you're looking to hear from the customer. So can I ask, when do you want to fix this? And um, they're gonna tell you. Now the next question you need to ask, and this is really important. Now, you might be sitting there listening to this video and go, these are interesting questions. I'm starting to feel a bit squirmish asking my customer these questions. Can I tell you that when you um, apply this process to your phone call, to your Zoom call, you will convert, I promise you, at least 50 to 60% better than you're currently converting now if you're not using this structure. So the next question is that you're gonna to say to your customers, you're gonna say something like, look, I know you're wanting to fix this right now, but can I ask you, how committed are you to wanting to make this happen? That's the next question. Now, they'll tell you, and this is where they really give away their vulnerability. Most of the time, unless you're dealing with a tire kicker or a um, rate shopper, they will give you the keys to their go ahead with the answer to this question. So the question once again is, um, okay, so I know you're wanting to fix this situation now. How committed are you to making this happen? And, they, and just let them talk. Now, the important part of any conversation you have with a customer, whether it's on the phone or via Zoom or Skype or whatever way you choose to communicate, is to understand this. You were born with one mouth and two ears, and it's important that you use them in proportion. Remember that. You're born with one mouth, two ears, use them in proportion. And by that I mean it's important you ask the question and you allow the customer to give you the answer. Stay silent. You don't need to add the bits like, oh, I can imagine how hard that is, or yeah, I understand how you feel, or I've been in that situation myself, or a lot of my clients say this, that, the other. Let your customer own the airtime and allow them to speak. So when you ask them that question of how committed are you to making this happen, you've just got to shut up and say nothing and listen to the answer. Because the responses to these questions, I can tell you, are integral to you taking this customer out of the market and them choosing to work with you. Then the next part of this uh, presentation or phone call that you're making or Zoom call that you're making with the customer is to acknowledge. So acknowledge the gap, the gap, and seek permission. My phone, they're telling me I've got an appointment coming up, but that said, let's keep going. So you've got to acknowledge the gap and seek in the permission. So that's where you say, okay, Mary, okay, John, I can definitely help you with what it is that you're trying to achieve. Would you like me to tell you about that? Or would you like to tell me about what I do? That's the better question. Okay, John, okay, Mary, I can help, definitely help you with that. Would you like me to tell you about what I do? And they'll, of course, say, yeah. The next part of this, and this is part 10, is to, and I'm gonna put part 10 here, because we're running out of real estate on this board. So part 10 is to state your expertise. spell it Z or S depending on where you're watching it from. So tell somebody or tell this person what you are an expert at. And it starts like this. Well, Mary, my area of, exp uh, of expertise is helping people, right? 
like you who want to upsize the size of their home to attain the right mortgage for them by thoroughly understanding what it is that they're trying to achieve and linking them with the lender that's most likely to give them a yes at the best possible rate. That's one sentence that you should rehearse off and you should be able to say with your eyes shut. Let me give that to you, to you again. Well, my area of expertise is helping blank to achieve blank by blank. Okay? And then you want to say, I typically work with, you know, people with growing families and I help them to secure the best mortgage for them in the shortest possible time with the least amount of resistance. Write that one down. In the shortest possible time with the least amount of resistance. Now, when you state what you're an expert at, whether it's in debt consolidation, cash out refinancing, buying an investment property, first time home buyers, whatever it is, Okay, it's important that you present it in a way that speaks directly to the problem that the customer has told you that they have. Okay, now when you do that, your answer will sound perfect to him or her. So remember, you, when you state your expertise, state it in a fashion that communicates or talks to the problem that the customer has identified that they're trying to achieve and when they hear that your answer will sound perfect uh, um, when you deliver it. Now can I tell you that this little part of the delivery is something that you want to script out and practice. Again, I keep saying to uh, the, um, the people I mentor, the loan officers that I'm mentoring. Now, these are people who are, you know, incredibly successful loan officers and mortgage brokers who are some earning 500,000 and a million dollars a year. I'm re-coaching them on today's way of communicating with the marketplace. You would understand that our methods of communicating have changed significantly over the last 20 years. I mean, you think about the SMS messages you send to somebody, the abbreviations that you use, you know, the OMG or the ATM, all of those acronyms uh, didn't exist 20 years ago. Our patterns of speech have changed. Our patterns of thought in relation to speech have changed. And it's important that you don't use a sales presentation on the phone or uh, in a Zoom call that is archaic. You wanna make it current. So it's important that you probably script out this bit to tell somebody, you know, what you're an expert at. All right, you must communicate to them that you are an expert at solving the problem. Okay, now when you have done that, so let me give you an example. My area of expertise is helping people who are on guilt incomes, who have multiple credit cards and other loans. My area of expertise is to help them to consolidate those high interest loans and debt and incorporate them into their mortgage so that they have one single low interest repayment to make every month. Now that's the example that I'll give, I've given you in relation to debt consolidation. Okay, so, so that they have, let me repeat the last little bit here, so that they can consolidate their debt in, into one single low interest repayment every month. Now, the next part of the script is the hardest part. Okay, watch what I do. So my area of expertise is to help uh, people who have high interest credit cards and loans and help them consolidate those high interest loads into their mortgage so they end up having one simple low interest loan to pay every month. They save themselves thousands of dollars of interest and that is my area of expertise. Now you're probably sitting there and going, why am I being silent? Because that is what I need you to do at this point in time. Zip, say nothing. Even if this silence goes on for 30 seconds, 
for a minute or for two minutes. Resist the temptation to say anything more because the person who speaks next, right, loses. So if you're the person who speaks next, you're going to lose this battle, okay? And if the customer is the first one to speak next, they're going to submit to working with you. Okay, so remember, and it's a tough one to practice, and it's an even tougher one to master. Stop. My area of expertise is to help people consolidate their high interest loans into one single low interest rate payment, and that's what I do. Now I want you just to listen for the response because you will be amazed at how by going silent, the next thing you hear is going to be from your customer. Okay then, so what are our next steps? Which once again was the primary objective when we started the call or in the first place. So can you see now that uh, without talking about um, rates without talking about borrowing capacity without talking about you know down payments or any of those sorts of things what we've done in structuring our phone call this way is demonstrated to our customer number one this is a unique selling proposition this person this is what they're thinking in their head this person is interested in me okay and that is why I suggest that you use these 10 steps to structure every single conversation that you have with your mortgage customer. Now, if you want to know more about uh, how I can help you as a loan officer or as a mortgage professional accelerate your earnings, accelerate your commission, accelerate how much money you earn per hour, uh, I want you to like this video, go to my website, mortgagesalesmastery.com.au, send me an email, mark at mortgagesalesmastery.com.au, get in contact with me, and what I'd like to do is, if you're serious and passionate about growing your business, taking it to the next level, going well beyond $100,000, but taking it to three, four, and $500,000. There is so much more that I can teach you that is going to improve your skill set and make you fundamentally the kingmaker in your local area in relation to what it is that you're trying to achieve. So hunt me out. If you like this video, click like, and I look forward to catching up with you again soon.